Okay, you've been there, right? The dishwasher overflows, the fridge just doesn't keep stuff cold. So what should you do when your home appliance breaks down? Do you shell out the money to repair a part or bite the bullet and buy a new machine? Tom Kreitler is the host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The Money Pit, and he joins us now with his advice. You know what I was just sitting thinking here while I was reading that was, you can't even find somebody to repair half the stuff anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> and I think so many homeowners, what they do is they just throw up their hands and they just buy they something new. They just want to replace it. You know, but the, the, the answer to the question really depends on three things. Okay. It depends first on the age of the appliance, because the older they get, the higher the chance of repetitive failure. Then it depends on the cost of the repair and the replacement cost if you want to buy it new. Uh, okay, we're going to do the math on all of that. Yeah. But before you get to that, two things. First of all, the new products have so many more cool gizmos. They do. And, and great new electron, electronic wizardry, A. And B, these people want to sell you warranties. They do. They do. And I think appliance warranties are almost never a good idea. Huh. You know, there's a lot of information uh, that you need to consider. First of all, are you really getting an extra amount of warranty? Because a lot of times the default warranty may be a year. They're telling you it's a two-year extended. It's really one extra year of coverage. You know, if it breaks down, who's going to address it? Can you bring it back to the store? You know, the FTC says they're almost always a bad idea. And the other thing is you ought to check with your credit card company because a lot of credit card companies have programs where they'll double the warranty if you use the card. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. How about my home insurance? Any help there? Not really, unless it's part of a, of a bigger claim, like if okay. you have a, you know, a storm damage or a roof collapse or something like that, or it's damaged in a flood, then it might be covered. All right, I want to work through some of these numbers, because you've okay. got great metrics for people out there. We tried to simplify them. All we right. have the whole list at moneypit.com if people want to see it. But let's talk through, okay, a refrigerator, median age. Right. Repair or replace? Depends on the cost of that repair. So let's say the age of the refrigerator is somewhere at 8 to 15 years. I would consider that sort of middle age for a refrigerator. If it was a $1,000 refrigerator to buy a new one and you need to put a $400 compressor in it, probably a bad idea because I'd only spend up to 30% of the value of that refrigerator at that middle age on a repair. So at 30% of the cost of buying new. Correct. That's your limit. That's, that's the break-even point. Exactly. What about a range? Well, similar math with the range, but I would put that number more at 20%. And a dishwasher. Yep. Yeah. Dishwasher, I would say it's kind of more closer to that 30% number, and that's 10 to 15 year life expectancy in that middle range. So again, look at the cost of the appliance, look at the cost of the repair. If it's more than 30%, don't do it. If it's less, do it. Now, where it gets sticky, Jerry, is if it's the second time you've had to fix it, right? Then you really have to ask yourself, is it worth it? And most times, it's probably not. Built-in microwave. Uh, less than that, about 15%. Okay, so devil's in the details here, and it really depends on how old that appliance is, because the newer it is, yep. the more you want to hold on to it. Or you might want to put it. into it, right. If you're right out of warranty and something happens, maybe you want to put some money into it then. When it gets old, not so much. And it probably also depends on the, the appliance itself, because some are easy to fix and others are hideously complicated. Well, for example, a disposer. If a disposer breaks down, I would just toss it. Okay. Well, that's great advice. Yep. Now, the other thing that you said that I thought was fascinating mm -hmm. is that you've got to clean these appliances. You do. You do have to clean them. Now, appliances don't need a lot of work, but they do need to be maintained. Right. And there are specialty products out that can do just that. This is a line of products, for example, from Glisten Cleaners. Pretty new to the market, but I love the convenience of it. For example, this is called Dishwasher You're Magic. You're not paid by Glisten. I am not paid by Glisten. Okay. This is a product called Dishwasher Magic. There's a, there's a wax seal in here. You unscrew it, turn it upside down, put it in your dishwasher, press start, and it does all the work. It basically cleans all that bacteria that gets in there and, and leads to the odor, breaks down the food particles, and so on. So it's dangerous for you if you don't clean it out. Well, it could be. I mean, have you ever had a washing machine, like, take your clothes out and they have kind of a weird odor to it? Well, that's the bacteria. It gets into the seals and stuff. So if you use the Washer Magic product or something like that, it will clean it. And uh, disposal care, too. Yeah, that's easy. You know, there's, a, there's disposable, there's a biodegradable packets in here. You throw it in the disposer, turn it on, it foams up and cleans the whole thing. That's so cool. Yeah, pretty neat stuff. And that makes it work better. Work better and last longer. Tom Kreitler, you are a genius, <laughs> my friend. Thanks for coming on the show You're welcome. Today.